A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, there was a young apprentice named Luke Skywalker who wanted nothing better than to be a Jedi Knight, one of the great guardian wizard warriors of the galaxy. And part of his motivation for becoming a Jedi was that he wanted to be a Jedi Knight like his father. His motivation was to follow in his father's footsteps, to be one of the great defenders of the galaxy as a Jedi Knight. He had grown up without his father, but he had always wondered at the identity of his father and wanted to follow in his footsteps. But little by little, as he learned more and more about his father, and then ultimately who his father really was, and in case anyone here after 40 years does not know, there will be no spoilers here. But when he does find the truth, it's so devastating for him to find out the kind of person his father was, that in his efforts to become a Jedi, it was no longer a task of following in his father's footsteps, but atoning for and redeeming his father. Even in the case of a negative father image, Luke went forth with that image, with that identity in his father, to redeem and atone the father. It's the classic step of the hero journey, as spelled out by such mythologists as Joseph Campbell. Part of that hero journey is atonement with the father, and the identity one has with the father and the family one is born in through the father becomes an important part of any mythological hero and, in fact, is an important part of any of us. In the Gospel today, we hear Jesus calling his first disciples. The second and third, a second pair of brothers, James and John, are identified in today's Gospel as the sons of Zebedee. And that's not the only time in the Gospels that we hear that reference to James and John being the sons of Zebedee. And it's safe to assume that since the Gospels, especially the Gospel of Mark, were written a few decades after Jesus ascended into heaven and reflected more the church's activity and its teaching at the time, those decades after Jesus ascended, placing everything, of course, in the context of a biographical story of Jesus, the fact that the Gospels refer to James and John as, a son, as sons of Zebedee indicates that that was a very important part of the identity of James and John as apostles. These were apostles of Jesus, but they were known wherever they were preaching as the sons of Zemedi. It was an important part of who they were, the family they belonged to in their role and vocation as apostles of Jesus. But they're not alone. Jesus himself has a great identity in and through his Father. Now, of course, all throughout the Gospels, Jesus is referred to as the Son of God. And throughout the Gospels, in some Gospels more than others, Jesus refers to his heavenly Father. But Jesus also has an identity that is very, very closely linked with his other Father, a man we honor and celebrate during this year called by our Holy Father a year of St. Joseph. I don't like to say that Joseph was a foster father of Jesus, even though I know it's a popular and traditional way to refer to him. And perhaps in the old Latin, it means a little different than what it means in English today. But a foster father does not lend his name to the children he cares for. Only a legal father adoptive or biological father does that. And Jesus in Nazareth was not known as the Son of God. Jesus was known as the Son of the Carpenter. And in some cases, Jesus is referred to as the Carpenter. So even the identity of Jesus throughout his ministry and in his growing up in Nazareth is tied and linked to his father, Joseph. And in fact, Jesus is more often than he is referred to as the son of Joseph, 
In the Gospels, Jesus is referred to as the son of David. When later on a Sunday reading, we will hear of Jesus curing blind Bartimaeus. What is it that gets Jesus' attention? And he cares and cures Bartimaeus. It was Bartimaeus shouting out for Jesus, crying out, not Jesus, son of God, but Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And that's what got Jesus' attention. And he complimented him for his faith. The beginning of the Gospel of Matthew gives that long genealogy of Jesus to emphasize Jesus as born in the line of the family of David. The beginning of the Gospel of Luke. The angel Gabriel says to Mary, he will take on, he will restore the throne of his father, David. But that link to the family of David is done in and through Jesus' connection to Joseph, who is very much his father. Maybe not his foster father, maybe not his biological father, but very much his legal father, the father who raised him, and the father into whose family Jesus was born. In addition to him being the, the son of God, an important part of Jesus' own identity as the word made flesh is in his father, Joseph. Today we hear a great deal about personal identity. Sometimes we even mix it with such terms as identity politics. We talk about our racial identity, gender identity, one's orientation. It becomes a very divisive part of our society, our nation. But how often do we look to find an identity in the families into which we are born? That too is a gift from God. God chose the families into which we would be born. We had no say in that. We were born into the individual families. We carry the name of that family. Have we ever connected our identities with the families into which we were born? For myself, the Nicholas family. So important is that, that even when there's the negative example of a father, or perhaps even an absent father, Think about it even more. Even families that experience divorce, the children still carry the name of their father. Do we ever think of identifying and understanding our own identity as people, as individuals, with the families into which we are born and the names we have received from our father? It's something to ponder during this year when we celebrate a man like Joseph who raised the Messiah. And yes, there are examples in which the experience of the father is not something positive, but something negative. But as we see in the stories of such heroes as Luke Skywalker and other mythological heroes throughout our history of storytelling, on the one hand, do we live to make our family and the name of our father proud? Or, in the case of a negative experience, how do we live so as to bring about a sense of atonement and redemption for our father? Luke Skywalker, his focus was who his father is and what that meant for his own destiny as a Jedi. James and John were and will always be known as the sons of Zebedee. Jesus, the son of God, is also and will always be known as the son of David, which he received through his identity as being a son of Joseph. Let all of us, and especially in deference to our Heavenly Father, during this year of St. Joseph, really ponder and reflect upon the families into which we were born and how we can live and find that identity in the name of our father, of our family name. Perhaps among the most important, at least in this context, 
is by truly living and passing on that faith we received from our parents, from our mothers and our fathers. And pass that on to your own children, who we hope will pass it on to their children. Let's see this faith as part of that identity we carry with our fathers, with our parents who were the first teachers of that faith. But especially in honor of our Heavenly Father and in the example of Joseph, the father of Jesus. Let us truly reflect upon the great gift that God has given us in the families into which we were born. And whether or not it is a life that we give to honor that name or to atone and redeem it, let us see as part of our identity as human beings and our identity as Christians, as Catholics, as followers of Christ, that we live in a way that gives honor to our fathers, as Jesus' life gave honor to his heavenly father and his father, Joseph the carpenter, and how obviously was the case of James and John, who will always be known by the name of their father, as they are called the sons of Zebedee.